Today's video is, is long overdue. It's also very highly requested by you guys because recently I've been talking a lot about the GoPro Hero 9 Black and really what I've been talking about with this GoPro is it is buggy. The touch screen has been trash and it's super buggy. Great camera, amazing features, great resolution. You just can't trust that it's gonna record a clip for you. And I said all that in, in my kind of six months later with the GoPro video and a ton of you, a, a shocking amount of you said, well then go back to the DJI Osmo Action. A, a two year old camera that's now only $200 versus a, a six month old camera that's now $400. So yeah, I've, I never really thought to compare these two because this is such an old camera compared to this guy, but I think, stick around to the end. I think you might be surprised at how well this guy still holds up versus the much more expensive and much newer GoPro Hero 9 Black. Before we jump into it though, hit that like button. That helps me a ton. And a huge thank you to Epidemic Sound who's sponsoring today's video. We will talk a little bit more about them later. Okay, so today's video, it, it kind of sounds like it sounds like a ridiculous comparison between these two because this guy, again, came out two years ago and it was it was to compete with GoPros at the time, GoPros Hero 7 Black. So at the time, it was a uh, it was a competitor, the the GoPro Hero 7 versus the Osmo Action. That's that's what this was competing against when this was out. And then they jumped to to the GoPro Hero 8, which got a little bigger and a little better. And then they came out with the Hero 9, which is massive compared to the Osmo Action. It's it's ginormous. They the GoPros, they just kept getting bigger. Hold on. Look how much bigger they kept getting. <laughs> The Hero 9 is so big compared to now the Osmo Action that again at the time was competing against the Hero 7. And because because the GoPro has, has had multiple iterations, when the 9 came out, I didn't even really think to compare it against this guy, but, but I should have. And like I said, long overdue today, Today we're doing it. And I know a lot of you are gonna say on, on paper, this thing smokes the Osmo Action. Again, GoPro has had multiple iterations since this guy was released, and now they've got this thing. So on so on specs alone, yes, this is, is much, much better than this guy. But again, this is sitting at $400 and this is only $200. So is it is it twice as good? Is it is it really worth it to spend $400 here when you could spend $200 and get this guy? Okay, so the GoPro Hero 9, much, much larger. We know that, but how about the screens? Because when the Osmo Action came out, that, that front screen, let me switch to it. That front screen was where it was at. When that came out, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how much I wanted a front screen on an action camera until I had a front screen on an action camera. But of course now the GoPro also has a front screen on its action camera and the GoPro can actually do the front screen and the rear screen at the same time while the Osmo Action can only do front screen and then you have to hit the button on the side and now, now it's on rear screen and I hit the button and it switches, now it's on front. But as noted on my GoPro six months later video, uh, the touch screen on this, the rear screen, is total trash. It just doesn't, it just doesn't do what you want it to do when you want it to do it. Like even scrolling is, is terrible. It's just a bad experience to work through the menus, to change settings, everything you're doing in the menus to change settings is, it's a bad experience. Whereas the Osmo Action, it feels more like an iPhone. Like everything is super snappy. It's really responsive. You just, yeah. Even the UI, the UI on the on the Osmo Action is better also. Like how you move through things. Oh, it's just so much better. So while the GoPro can do both screens, uh, the touch screen is, is kind of trash. The front screen is good. Oh, also the screens on the GoPro are brighter than the screens on the Osmo Action. So when you're on the sunlight, you will notice that the GoPro is significantly brighter than the Osmo Action. But that doesn't do you a lot of good if that bright screen doesn't, doesn't work. 
So yeah, as for as for screens, I I still give it to the Osmo Action, even though I have to press the button to switch, which does drive me crazy, and I I don't understand why they can't do both screens at once. I thought that was just going to be an easy firmware update. Two years later, they still can't do it. It's probably a processor issue. And then the other two kind of physical things about these two cameras is yes, the the GoPro does have that that lens cover that you can you can get off of there and it's got the little mount underneath it. That's nice and I, I really appreciate that they brought that back because the Hero 8 didn't have that. The Osmo Action has a circular lens thing so you can just screw it off and screw another one on and that also makes putting things like ND filters or, or circular polarizers on here. You can put all sorts of things on here just like a normal camera lens which oh by the way is circular. A circular lens makes sense for a camera, whereas the GoPro, it's got that the square lens cover. I still don't understand why GoPro went with this and they didn't just switch to a, a circular lens cover. It's so much better. But the last thing is, is the GoPro has those built-in flip down feet. So the GoPro is really an action camera and cage in one, whereas the Osmo Action, it still requires a cage. Again, two years old, back when the Hero 7 still had a cage. Uh, and this is an aftermarket cage. This is by PGY Tech. So it has the two cold shoes on there. But you can see that once you do this, once you add the cage, the size comparison is a bit closer. Like this, this isn't that much bigger than the Osmo Action once it's in a cage. All right, let's get these things mounted up. I'm gonna hop on the electric skateboard and we're just gonna go bomb around outside and see how these two compare. Oh, these guys, these thumb screws. In every single video where I use these thumb screws, people ask me about them. They, they say, where can I get those thumb screws? Uh, Cause they're like, they're more high torque. Like you've got two bits sticking out. So you're like, there's a lot to crank on. Uh, I will link those below for you guys because yeah, everyone always asks about them. All right, beauty, there we go. We got the, the GoPro Hero 9 and Osmo Action mounted up. I'm just gonna cruise around on a skateboard. We're gonna look at the, the footage side by side. We're gonna hear some audio side by side. And you guys can tell me if you think, if you think that the GoPro Hero 9 is worth twice as much as the Osmo Action. We'll go uh we'll go skateboard a little bit and uh yeah, get some get some fun footage. Where's my sunglasses? I need my sunglasses. All right, so right off the bat, you'll you'll remember the GoPro is 5K. The Osmo Action only goes up to 4K. So there's a huge difference there in resolution, but can you see the resolution difference? I'm not gonna tell you guys which camera is which just yet, so so you'll you'll have to just look at the footage, and figure it out. And the question there being, can can you really see the difference between 5K and 4K? Is is that significant enough? Now, yes, it will give you the ability to crop in in post, which is super useful. So if you film in 5K, you can actually crop, which is kind of like a, a digital zoom. So, so that's a major benefit of being able to film in 5K. But in theory, you should see a difference in the actual footage. It should look a little bit more detailed than 4K. <laughs> By the way, how's the audio sound right now? Let's do the audio test right now. And I'm gonna kind of go back and forth between both these cameras. Again, I still am not telling you which is which yet. So you can determine which footage you like better and you can determine which audio you like better between camera one and camera two before knowing what they are. And for the audio test, I'll tell you about today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. I. I love Epidemic Sound because I'm a creator. I'm making videos like this all the time. If you are also a creator or you're making videos for the internet, uh, I don't know why you wouldn't be subscribed to Epidemic Sound. They've got 35,000 plus audio tracks. They've got 90,000 sound effects. And yeah, they're just, they're just the place to go to get really, really high quality music and audio sound effects, but for a really reasonable price. You pay one subscription price per month and you get unlimited access to them. And oh, by the way, you can just click the first link in the description and get a totally free trial. You can make videos with it. You can post it online all during your free trial. Uh, again, totally free. Yeah, and they tie directly into your YouTube channel. So you actually tell them who you are in, in your YouTube channel so that you never get copyright strikes. Copyright strikes, by the way, on YouTube, huge pain in the butt and you don't have to worry about that with epidemic sound again first thing in the description totally free trial all right i'm gonna keep riding 
the electric skateboard around. We're gonna get some more footage and then we'll go back to the office. But for all of this, just kind of look at the footage back and forth and figure out which one do you like better without knowing which camera's which, which camera do you like better? Here we go. All right, what did you guys think of, of that footage, camera one and camera two? Uh, how did you think about the footage, the coloring, the audio test? Real quick, before, before I tell you which camera is which, I'm gonna show you a quick stabilization test that I did yesterday, and uh, I was kind of shocked by this one. I know it wasn't like a crazy long stabilization test. I, I just went for a quick run with it, but I was trail running, like really, really shaking these two cameras up. And and camera one was the DJI Osmo Action and camera two was the GoPro. Now watch it again, knowing which camera is which and watch the background of the GoPro where, where I run past the trees. You see the trees wobble quite a bit. When I'm running down the hill, the houses and the backgrounds have a big wobble to them. And you don't, you don't see that at all with the DJI Osmo's Rock Steady. And that, that was the thing, that was the thing that surprised me most about this test. I, I actually, depending on, on what you thought of the footage, I've always kind of known that I like the footage that comes out of the Osmo Action better than the GoPro. I think that the GoPro is, is really oversaturated. I think it's, it's very contrast. A lot of people love it. A lot of people in, in previous tests are like, I love how the GoPro looks. I love the, the really saturated punchy blues, the super saturated oranges, that like crushed black contrast. Tons of people love that. So, so maybe if, if you do like that look, Look, and I think the Hero 9 is is totally your camera. Uh, I've always known though that if I'm gonna shoot the GoPro, I usually shoot in flat mode because it's hard, it's hard to remove contrast and remove saturation without things looking kind of wonky. But if you shoot in flat mode, it's easier to add it. So the DJI Osmo Action being more of a flatter profile, just straight out of the camera. I I actually prefer that. But that's all subjective. That's totally up to you and which camera. It's why I didn't tell you which camera was which is because I want you to look at it and say, what what do I like better? Which of these two would I prefer to be editing with? And for me, I would prefer to be editing with the Osmo action footage. Now, what also surprised me was, was the Osmo action was not good in the audio test. I didn't think that the, the audio coming out of the Osmo action was nearly as good as I remember. I feel like I remember it being better. And I'll do more testing and, and playing with settings to see if I can make it sound better somehow, but but yeah, especially while, while I was actually skateboarding, I did not think that the audio coming out of the Osmo Action was very good. And the GoPro, the GoPro actually did really, really well with wind noise. In when, when I was just sitting there talking to them, I think they sound really similar, almost identical. Maybe there's a little bit more warmth to the GoPro audio, but while actually moving, Neither of them do great with wind, but the GoPro Hero 9 did do, it did do quite a bit better than the Osmo Action with wind. Okay, so to, to wrap all this up, a lot of this is 
totally subjective. What, what do you actually like better when you see the footage side by side? What do you like better audio wise? Is the stabilization on par? I think so. Does this have horizon leveling also? Yes. Does it, you, can you put a 360 mod on this? Totally. Can't do that on this. Again though, $200 and $400. The fact that they're that close is surprising. But but the last point and the biggest for me is, is reliability. When we were in Park City and I was shooting that whole video for the One X2, the, the 360 camera, I had a GoPro Hero 9 mounted to my helmet. And the idea was that, that as I went through the trees and I was, I was having to weave the stick in front of me between the trees, that I was gonna get this like cool behind the scenes shot, this cool like POV shot as I went through the trees and the GoPro would would not record for me that day at all. I would hit it to start recording. It would start recording. I would be like, oh, cool, we're good. Have it mounted on my helmet. And then I would hear doo, 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 this really weird tone that I think I've never heard from it before. And it just said battery air. I keep running the battery as soon as I hit start to record. It comes on, it says I have 55% battery. Like I'm good to go. It starts recording. And then like a minute later ish, two minutes later, it gives me a battery error warning. So it might be too cold for the GoPro battery. I don't know, but the GoPro is not working today. That, it does that. Is it off again? She's off. She's off, damn it. I tried six different batteries with it. It refused to operate that day. Uh, maybe it was the cold because now it works. It, it does operate for me. And it was just another, another thing another bug another like oh this thing this camera that is so so good i just can't count on it and that's huge for me that's huge for me and maybe it's huge for you maybe if you are going to do some cool action sport you're going to like jump off a cliff or go off a ramp and you're only going to do it one time uh if you hit record on your gopro and you can't count on the fact that it's actually going to record that thing that you're doing. <sighs> but here's the thing, uh, probably most likely both of these companies are coming out with a new camera this year. DJI, they just have to. I, I have a bunch of ideas on how they could make this like the most incredible camera in the entire world. Maybe I'll make a whole video on that. But obviously the Hero 10 is coming out this year and hopefully it will not have the, the struggles that the Hero 9 had. But in the meantime, in, in, until one of these companies comes out with a new camera, which of these two am I gonna be using? It's, it's the Osmo Action. After, after this thing failed me in Park City, I kinda, I kinda swore it off. I was, I was very, very upset that it would not work. And I and I pretty much said, I am not shooting with the Hero 9 anymore. So for all of you out there that, that responded, I, I've never had a problem with my Hero 9. I'm, I'm very happy for you. I'm very excited that you've never had an issue with it. I, uh, that's not my experience. I've had a bunch of issues with it. And and I am officially switching back to my, my two-year-old $200 action camera. I'll be using this. I'll be using my One X2. I'll be using my One R. And I'll be using the Insta360 Go 2, that, that little guy. And all together, those, those will be the action cameras that I use in addition to, to my big camera to make these videos. So I'll be using my big camera and all of those action cameras to make these. And I, I will no longer be using my Hero 9, unless there's like some crazy firmware update where they go, Trust us, we fixed it. It's great now. Even then, I would do, I would do a lot of testing with the Hero 9 before, before I trusted it again. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame. How's that go? Remember when Bush messed that up? <laughs> okay, let me know your guys' opinion. I wanna hear your thoughts. I wanna hear your experiences with both these cameras. I know a bunch of you have had both of them and I, I wanna hear your experiences as well. Let me know down in the comments. Right now, after seeing all of this, which, which of these two cameras would you go with? If you have had a Hero 9 and you've had like no problems, please comment below because I feel like, I feel like only people that have had problems are commenting on these videos and and it does, may, maybe, maybe there's a bunch of people that have not had any issues. Make your voices heard below. All right, uh, I'll see you guys soon. I'm taking, I'm taking this one with me.
it is crazy how much smaller this little guy is. Like once you hold it in your hand, you realize like, oh, that is way smaller. That is not what she said. <laughs>